Today's my topic is about the thrombectomy for the acute stroke. Today's topic is this five. Why we have to do the thrombectomy, how to choose the devices, and medium vessel occlusion, and 24 hours, seven days, and COVID-19. Cardiogenic embolism is one of the fatal strokes that comes from the atrial valve that the thrombs come from the heart and go up to the brain, make a devastating stroke like this. And once we become the cardiogenic embolism, the half of the patient cannot be able to walk. This means we have to save the patient quickly. And the 1.9 million brain neurons die in the one minute. So the time is very important comparing to the collateral flow. Standard vaccination device changed the history of the intervention of the acute stroke. This is how we use it. We navigate the balloon guiding catheter to the neck ICA and navigate the micro catheter through the thrombus like this. And we navigate the micro catheter through the thrombus with the micro guide wire. And we go to the distal of the thrombus. We throw the micro guide wire. And after that, we navigate the stent. And the stent retriever is a self expanding stent. So we put the stent at the start of the clot and we withdraw the micro catheter, then the stent will open automatically. And we wait for a while that the stent get inside the clot. And after that, we lock the stent. and inflate the balloon guiding catheter to block the entry to new territory and we withdraw the stent with the micro catheter. Like this. So this is the first RCT that Mr. Clean that the ah, just ここ後で直します. This is the first paper of the RCT of comparing the endovascular treatment and the interventional treatment, the Mr. Green from the Netherlands. The inclusion criteria was 18 years old and the anterocircular inclusion and the preoperative MRS was less than two and within six hours. So for these patients, if we, if we add the endovascular treatment, the 90 days modified rank scale will improve 90% to the 33%. And at this study, the stent retriever was used in 97%, so this means the stent retriever is very effective compared to the other old devices. And this is a five meta analysis of the ELMAS trial. So, overall treatment effect is number needed to treat 2.6. This means when we treat the three patients, more than one people will get improved the neurology. And this NNT 2.6 is very low. That when we compare with the acute myocardial infarction, the PCF vs. the IV lysis, the number needed to 46. So this 2.6 is a very low number. But we have to con consider about the reperfusion rate and the outcome. The, when the reperfusion rate is very low, the outcome is very low. And also the reperfusion time and the clinical outcome. We, when we took so much time to recanalize, the outcome will get worse. So we have to choose the patient faster and the treat faster. So from these, effect, uh, these five meta-analysis, the effect of the thrombectomy is seven, within seven hours and 15, 18 minutes. But if we have a good collateral flow, more than six hours become effective. So this is a thrombectomy for the stroke at 6 to 16 hours with the selection by the perfusion imaging, diffuse 3 study. Uh, the favorable shift in the endovascular treatment plus medical therapy in 90 days in modified ranking scale. And the MRS at 0 to 2 was 45% versus 70%. And also for this is a 
don't study that the stroke with a mismatch from six to 24 hours after stroke. The patient arriving from after six or from the symptom onset, the 73% relative reduction of the dependence in the activities of daily living and 35% absolute increase in the number of the patient achieving the function independence. So this means when we select a patient with a perfusion, the patient who have a good collateral will get a good outcome. So from this is an AHA guideline that AIS within 6 to 16 hours of the last known is evidence level A and the AI, AIS within 6 to 24 hours of, of last known is the evidence of B recommended. And also the aspiration catheter and adapt technique is also very effective. So this is ASTER trial, the aspiration first versus stent retriever first. The TK2B3 means a good recanalization. When we compare with ADAPT and the stent, the ADAPT is 85.4% versus stent is 83.1%. And the puncture to recanalization, the ADAPT is 31 minutes and the stent is 44 minutes. So this, this means the ADAPT is a little bit faster than comparing the stent. The ADAPT technique is not in fair comparing the stent. And other, this is another study, the COMPASS trial, that when we compare with ADAPT and stent, TK2B3 was ADAPT was 91% and stent is 89%. And the 90-day MRS02 was 52%, 49%. So we have two RCTs that the uh, stent retriever versus adapt to this, adapt is all not inferior to the stent retriever system. So this is Japanese guideline. And the, this line is the time, and this line, and the, this line is ischemic core. So from the zero to six hours, the, if the patient, the pre-operation MR is at zero to one, and uh, if the occlusion is anterior circulation, means ICA or the MC occlusion, and the aspect is more than six, and then I just more than six, this means that not so severe infarction is included, and the patient is more than 18 years old, and the TPA should be done if possible. This is the evidence level A. And also from the six to six now from the onset, if the MRI aspect, is, MRI aspect is more than seven and NIH is, is more than 10, this is also grade A. They also, the more than six are from the onset, the mismatch between ischemic core and the professional area is, exists. We can do that. Thrombectomy is evidence level grade B. So endovascular thrombectomy is effective in all RCTs and mandatory treatment for the acute stroke. And this is the latest paper that from the Japan, that endovascular therapy for acute stroke with the largest ischemic region. This means aspects ratio was three to five. Even the, if there's a large ischemic core, the MRS ranking scale, zero to three will improve comparing to the medical care group. But we have to notice that there are some intracranial hemorrhages getting more in the endovascular therapy. So we can do it, but we have to mention about this intracranial hemorrhage. So the one the patient comes to onset and we detection and delivery and the patient comes and we have to consider the data and we make the decision to do the drug. This means the TPA and we do the puncture recolonization. So in our hospital, we when the patient arrives, we think about the TPA first, and we do the CT and the blood sampling in the neck US, and we have, if we have the indication of the TPA, we go to the TPA, and we do the CTA or the MRI. Or if the patient is, is in 24 hours and the, not the indication for the TPA, we direct to the CT or MRI, and if there is a major vessel occlusion, we do the thrombectomy. So from the door to the TPA, we do it within 30 minutes, and from the door to the puncture, we do it in the 60 minutes. We have to think about the cardiac infarction. Is the recanalization rate is same as the cardiac infarction? This, the answer is no. The, from the Japanese PCI registry shows that the, the, from the ST elevating myocardial infarction, the higher recanalization, it's 98% is the recanalization rate. So we have to get more good recanalization compared to the myocardial infarction. 
So we have some combined technique with the stent and plus the suction catheter. So there are some reports from papers that have the combined technique. That this is a very famous paper that captives trial. This is a stent with a aspiration catheter and the continuous aspiration during the thrombectomy. From this, the good recognition time comparing the adapter and the captive is 14 minutes and 31 minutes. The adapter is faster than the stent, so this means captive is more and more faster than the stent. And the recognition was this, from this paper, it was 100% comparing to the adapter 81%. And also, the ASAP is from report from Japan, the aspiration cut the proximal to the clot and then deploy the stent and the stent stored in the suction catheter. And the first pass, this paper, the first pass recognition is 77.5% and the final ticket 2v3 is 95% and the procedure time was 21.5%. So this method is based on adapt technique and also even if we do the adapt or the, we do the captive or the ASAP, the, we can get a good recognition like a, a cardiac infarction. So I'll show you one case. This is 84 years old female. This is a proprietive CT. And this is a CT angio, proper CT. We see the ICA occlusion. And this is a rapid system. The aspect was seven. So this means that this is a good indication for the thrombectomy. And when we move to the, the DSA room and we do the ICAZ, we can see the M1 proximal occlusion. And we navigate this microcatheter and we check that we are at the distal of the clot and after that we deploy the stent so it's here, here. And we catch up the suction catheter and this is a stent. Then after we deploy it, we can get a good recognition like this TQ3 organization. And this is a real world video that from the arrival to the DSA room. The patient comes from with the ambulance and the, our neurologist go there and they start to check the neurology. And this is transferred from the another hospital. And we knew that this is stroke, but we don't know this is ischemic stroke or the hemorrhagic stroke. So we moved to the CT room and at this time, the, this neurologist is checking the neurology. And after the CT, there is no hemorrhagic. Um, it was not the hemorrhagic stroke, so we start the CT angio. And at the CT angio, we knew that this was a vaginal occlusion, so we start to go to the uh, angio suite, and there the, the doctor is now moving to the angio suite. At inside angio suite, the other doctors are already preparing the stent and the other devices like this. And we move the patient to the DS room, and after that we do the puncture. And these two neurologists is now joining us with the thrombectomy. And we knew the basal occlusion here. We navigated the stent and the suction device. The all the patient doctor is doing another thing to reduce time. And we now I think it's navigating the stent. And then we are navigating the suction catheter like this with the suction pump. And we throw all things. And after that, we got a good recanalization like this. There is only one paper comparing the combined technique and the center. But this is the first RCT. This was a, a 2021 last year. The first study, the open level and the blind endpoint trial. Unfortunately, the effective recolorization was no significant difference between the stent retriever and the combined technique. 
But aside initial intercorrection alone, the TIC2, 2C3 was combined better. And also the rescue treatment is lower in combined techniques. So combined techniques is a little bit safe compared to the stent retriever. But the three months and 12 months multifarnic exposure, there is no significant difference. But the parenchymal hemorrhage type 2 was less in combined technique. But from this study, but the, the author says that the trial may be being underpowered to the detect a small difference between two groups because the stent retriever um, group was have a good recognition. Okay, now I moved the, now how to choose the select of the stent. So this is a selection thrombectomy technique. So we have the stent retriever and the combination technique and the adapt technique. Evidence level of the stent retriever and the adapt technique is very high. The procedure is very easy in the stent retriever and the adapt is very easy. But the recognition rate is the combination technique is very high. But we have to mention that the cost the combination technique is very high because the stent is about four thousand US dollar and the adapt technique is two thousand eight hundred dollars. And the selection of the, the techniques, the, we have to use the balloon guiding catheter from the combined technique and the stent retriever. And, and that after we don't need the balloon guiding catheter. The micro catheter is not necessary also. And the suction catheter, the stent retriever is not necessary. So this means the CC introducer should be stent retriever is eight French and the combination technique is nine French and the adapter is eight French. So this is our hospital um, protocol that when we see the ICA, we use a nine frame bound guiding catheter and the aspiration catheter, the bigger the better, and the stent is five to six millimeters. So we need a 0, 0.0 to seven inch micro catheter. And from the M1 proximal, it is also almost same, but a little bit small, using a little bit smaller stent. And then on this or the M2, we use a more smaller stent. And from the posterior, we do the adapt technique because we don't we cannot navigate the nine French balloon guiding cutter to the VA. But we have to mention that in the Japan, all devices are fully covered by the insurance, so we can use a lot of devices, but it's not different, in, it's different from the other countries. So we have to consider that evidence level and the safety and the cost economical effect. This is also an important point. And these days, the medium vessel collision is getting more interesting in this is because this is a paper. I checked the, the medium vessel closing, the paper is getting higher and higher these days. And from the Elmas collaborators study, the thrombectin for the M2 collision is also effective. And the recursion rate is not bad, but improves and improves the prognosis. But the M2 also have a high area hemorrhage complication. So this is our case that this is a 62 years old male, the warfarin from mitral regurgitation. The PTINR was 2.19, so this is contraindication for the TPA. The sudden aphasia and the right hand person NI is 20. This means a very severe stroke and the onset to the door time was 41 minutes. So you can see the old infarction here, but we see the left M2 occlusion. So we move to the angio suite and we do the left ICAG. We, we have the parietal lobe infarction. So we use a very small stent. And we have a good recognition, TK3. The function to recognition time was 43 minutes. And the NIHSS improved to the 20 to 4. And next, my topic is 24 hours, 7 days. In Japan, this is 2060 and this is 2018. The number of the patient from is increasing more and more. And this is our prefecture. It's getting better and better, but there is some blank area that does not do the thrombectomy even in now. In our hospital, the number of the thrombectomy is increasing day by day, but Unfortunately, in 2020, we have the COVID-19, so that this is less number, but about the expected number is 20 per 10, 100,000 patient population per year. And this is the real world data. The tk 2 b 3 is 88% in our hospital. Not high, but not low. But we have to keep the system for 24 hours and seven days. This 
in our hostel, we collaborate with a neurologist and the neurologist, uh, we get inside the angel suite with a neurologist. So this is the picture that the neurologist doctor teaching the neurosurgeon resident like this. And this dark circle is the neu neurologist and the light circle is the neu neurosurgeon. So we make some, we keep two, two person to do the thrombectomy every day. And we call the doctor with the free SNS to, to keep the doctors coming to our hospital, even at night time. And these days in Japan, we can use the join that we can transfer the DICOM data to the mobile phone so that we can check it even if, if we are at home. And the last topic is the COVID-19. The protected cold stroke is very important in all over the world. We have to protect ourselves and we have to pay, treat the patient. In Japanese uh, stroke society told us that we have to do the thrombectomy patient even if the patient is with the COVID-19. But we have to do the thrombectomy with the, under the protection. It's a little bit different from the uh, myocardial infarction. The, this is a myocardial uh, Japanese Heart Society, they told that if you cannot protect yourself, you can do the IVTPA should be considered. This means that the number needed to treat was 2.6 to 43. So the, from the STL with a myocardial infarction, we, the thrombectomy um, intervention is not mandatory treatment, but uh, for the acute stroke, it's mandatory treatment, even the, if the patient is occurred with uh, COVID-19. So we prepare the DSA room to protect the zone. So this is a angel suite. Uh, this area is red zone. This means that this may be infected. And we make the wall to here and here, and, and this place is very safe. And we bought a negative pressure unit like this as for the during the present the air goes in from patient face to the door so the doctor does not breathe with the patient polluted breath. And this is protocol. So we the device should be simple at this time and the patient, the doctor should be few people get inside the room. So the doctor is separated and the nurse, one nurse and the two neurosurgeon and neuro, neurological doctor and one emergent doctor is getting inside the room. And this is a, we have to do the treatment with a few number of the doctors. So this is my conclusion. The thrombectomy to acute stroke is a necessary treatment and as patient cat to have a evidence that it's not inferior to the stent. And the medium vessel occlusion may be the next candidate. And technique should be de decided by the institution of the circumstance. And even under the COVID-19 pandemic, the thrombectomy should be done. Thank you very much.